Few things are as horrible as the fact that somewhere out there, there are cartel sicarios torturing and killing on camera. In this video, we'll discuss the interrogation and execution of El City, a Jalisco New Generation cartel member by the rival cartel, Los Viagras. Over the last eight years, Los Viagras have turned from a military self-defense group into a brutal cartel that is threatening the biggest Mexican cartel's authority. And the only way to do that is with unspeakable violence. Let's explore the rise of the Los Viagras cartel, their war against the CJNG, and the horrific El City video that sent shivers down the internet's spines. But before we go on, I must insist, please don't go looking for the actual video on the dark web. The level of brutality simply cannot be forgotten overnight. There's nothing good that can come out of watching something this horrifying. That being said, let's dive in. Today's story begins with Mexico's most brutal cartel, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel was formed in 2009 by Namasio Asegura Cavantes, aka El Mincho. El Mincho started out in a family of avocado farmers. Desperate to make quick cash, he illegally immigrated to the United States with his older brother and started selling drugs. After getting arrested twice, he was deported back to Mexico. There, he joined the Milenio Cartel and, well, the police. El Mincho was a cop for a few months. This came in handy later. When the Milenio Cartel bosses were killed or arrested, the cartel was dismantled and El Mincho used his military training to form his own cartel the CJNG. Unlike most cartels, the CJNG was highly organized and had impeccable training on ambushes and attacks and had all the firepower the Mexican military has. And with the money they made from drug trafficking, El Mincho invested more and more into weaponry. And in July, footage would emerge of that CJNG convoy. These gunmen call themselves the elite group and pledge allegiance to El Mincho. They're armed with assault rifles with grenade launchers attached to the barrel, heavy machine guns, and also this gun, this is a 50 caliber sniper rifle. It's a powerful weapon that the CGNG loves to show off. They have a very intelligent strategy, which is basically branding themselves and looking like paramilitary power. Um, they do have their, their full letters, right? The CJNG on their vest. They dress as properly military. They also have these um, high caliber guns. They have what they call those monstros, which are really basically what handmade, man-made tanks, you know? Uh, so their, their power is incredible. As soon as CJNG was founded, crime in New Mexico skyrocketed to unprecedented numbers. In 2017, the murder rate peaked at over 31,000 people, the worst year in recorded Mexican history. And as the government is desperately trying to control the situation, the notorious CJNG is only getting more violent. Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG, is the single criminal organization most responsible for these deaths on both sides of the border. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade. Tonight, the DEA is offering $10 million for information leading to the arrest of the Mexican drug kingpin known as El Mencho. Yep, the CJNG are so powerful that they are targeting the government itself. Instead of bribing officials, like many drug lords, they threaten their lives and create distractions and terror to get things their way. The Cartel Jalisco, they are very well consolidated as one group. And so that means that they can really put up really organized attacks against the Mexican government. And all that violence is only to have leverage in the negotiations with the um, government, with politicians, right? They create this chaos. To, to, to go and sit with a local politician and say like, okay, do you want more or shall we negotiate this? The CJG is Mexico's bloodiest cartel and it all started with an ex-cop and avocado farmer. It's a similar story with Los Viagras. Incredibly enough, Los Viagras started out as a government-formed self-defense military group. In 2014, former Michoacan security commissioner Alfredo Castillo Carvantes created this group with the goal of capturing the leader of the Knights Templar cartel, Servando Gomez Martinez, also known as El Tura. But their appointed leader, Mariano Sierra Santana, was not a good man. In fact, he was one of the very worst. At the time of Los Viagras' formation, he'd fled Michoacan and was a wanted man for He'd fled the state of Michoacan after getting into a fight with Luis El Americano Torres, a member of the Knights Templar cartel. 
Sierra was wanted for crimes similar to Reyes, in addition to and charges stemming from his alleged involvement in a June 2014 shootout in Apatzingan, Michoacan, which left seven dead. He was just using this opportunity to get revenge on the Templar cartel. Mariano and his brothers were not the right people to work for the government. They were insurgents, had a history of illicit activities, and were biding their time until they could create their own cartel. Mariano and one of his brothers, Nicholas, aka El Gordo, had started out their criminal life with cockfighting. It was in this context that the family chose their nickname, the Viagras. Cockfighting is a brutal sport where the poor animals are forced to fight each other until the death. This goes to show how desensitized these people were to violence. And when they started fighting the infamous CJ and G, things really got out of hand. It's as interesting as it is sad that both the CJ and G and Los Viagras started out on the same side of justice, working with the police or the military. After Los Viagras helped the military arrest La Tuda, they seized power over the region and took control of the Knights Templar cartels' territories and businesses. But this was happening in 2015 when the CJNG was at the peak of its power, fighting to conquer every trafficking route in Mexico. Before long, a war ensued between the two cartels. In 2019, this made headlines throughout Mexico. The articles covering this incident made it clear just how terrifying both cartels were. The CJNG has been identified by both Mexican and United States authorities as the most powerful and dangerous criminal organization in the country, and its leader, Nemesio El Mencho Segura Cervantes, is one of the most wanted men on the planet, and he and his gang are going up against Los Viagras. What Machoke and Governor Silvano Orioles described in 2017 as the most bloodthirsty and dangerous criminal group operating in the state. Yeah, both cartels made a name for themselves by 2019. In August 2019, nine bodies were found hung over an overpass. These were all Los Viagras members. Next to the horrific site, the CJNG had left a message. Kind people, go on with your routine. Be patriotic and kill a Viagra. This is the context of Los Viagras' terrifying video. In a war where violence won you first prize, Los Viagras increased their brutality as a warning to the CJNG. Federico Ávalo Sánchez, mi apodo es Siri. Trabajo para trabajo para el cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Me desempeño vendiendo droga y como sicario. Trabajo en compañía del Barzón de Benja, de La Guayabita y del Rábano. Nos apoya Rodrigo Tejeda, Armando Tejeda y Rodrigo Sánchez, el actual presidente de Zaguayo. Son los que nos apoyan con el gobierno de Zaguayo para que nosotros entremos a hacer nuestras fechorías. Manuela Cazuela nos apoya con dinero, armas y también para abrir el gobierno. Pido clemencia para que me perdonen la vida, quiero seguir viviendo. Les digo a los jóvenes que no crean nada de lo que les diga las personas de Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. No te apoyan, no te defienden, te dejan morir solo en la batalla. Cuando saben que te está pasando algo, te dejan solo. Solo ellos matan a gente inocente. Pido aquí a los señores que me den clemencia y me perdonen la vida. Estoy muy arrepentido. Of course, these are words a rival cartel makes you say if they capture you. They will force you to downgrade your own cartel and praise the captors. But what El Cidi said at the end is true. Cartels don't protect their sicarios. If they're in trouble, they let them be kidnapped, tortured, and killed. El Cidi also confirmed something many people fear, that the government is in cahoots with Mexico's biggest cartels. In fact, it's with the corrupt government's officials' protection that cartels get so big. Whenever the cartels makes a dollar, the corrupted officials makes a few pennies and so they ensure they are protected when they kill and their smuggling routes are kept safe. It's disgusting to think that 
Instead of keeping innocent people safe and happy, some police officers work hard to keep the cartels happy. Sometimes they get threatened and their families' lives are threatened and they don't see another option. Other times, the promise of cash trumps their morality. Anyway, back to the video. Los Viagras' video starts with El Cid's interrogation. Clearly, El Cid is scared and all too aware that he will soon die in a horrible manner. To call his death horrible would be an understatement, to be honest. After El Cid finishes his story and asks for a clemency, a Los Viagras executioner pulls out a knife and stabs him in the chest. But it's not a deep cut. It's just enough to f*** his chest open. El Cid is alive throughout this whole process. He's even alive as the executioner pulls out the flesh from under the skin. This goes on for several minutes until all that's left is something that looks like a butcher's shop gone wrong. The video cuts at that point, but according to some sources, the executioner also removes El Cid's heart at the end. Sadly, this wasn't the first or the last time Los Viagras did this. In another terrifying video known as Guerrero Fang, Los Viagras captured a father and a son and after decapitating the father in front of the son, they proceeded to do to the son what they did to El Cid. It's gruesome and simply hard to fathom that such things happen in reality. Again, I want to warn you guys not to watch these videos online as they are deeply traumatizing and simply cannot be forgotten. This was the first video I ever saw. For weeks, I struggled to sleep at night. I'd hear the sounds of gurgling noises replay in my head. Sometimes you forget that humans can be the scariest monsters that exist in real life. I remember watching this video as a child on an easily accessible gore site. I truly believe my ignorance and freedom as a child watching stuff like this is the reason for some of my problems and desensitized mind. In the cartel wars, violence always leads to more violence, and it only gets more brutal too. Sadly, there's also a video posted by the CJNG where they torture and kill a Los Viagras member. Before the poor man is destroyed on camera, the executioner looks at the camera and says, I send my regards to all of you who keep acting out, especially you, Gordo and Chava. Look at how I got your people. Look at them. Is this what you all want? You do know him, yes? You better step up your game. What do you mean no more? This one's for you, Chava, just so you can see how I have your people. Look at how I have them. As the man remembers his victim alive, he keeps taunting Los Viagras' kingpin on camera saying this is what happens if they keep claiming their territory. In fact, this is why all these videos are filmed and posted online. The cartels send a message to rival cartels and to anyone watching. Anyone who messes with them will end up like this. They use fear as a currency and it's working. Today, even though the CJNG is one of Mexico's largest and most powerful cartels, they still can't beat Los Viagras over their Tierra Caliente territory. Despite numerous new generation attacks, Los Viagras and the Cartel del Abuelo were reported as having a profound advantage over new generation in Tierra Caliente. As of 2021, rumors have also started circulating that El Mencho might finally be out of the picture. So with all the rumors around El Mencho being dead or very ill or out of the cartel, that started, I guess they started like around 2020 when people, st we started re started reading about El Mencho being out of the Cartel Jalisco. Uh, I reached out to two middle range commanders inside the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. One of them believed that he was just literally just out of the cartel. He's, he's like, he's well, he's alive. He's just like stepped up or, or stepped out of the cartel. And the other guy believes that El Mencho is actually pretty ill or might even be dead. You might think, oh good. Then the CJNG will crumble and the violence will stop. Well, it's never that simple. As El Mencho did with the Millennial Cartel, if the CJNG crumbles, other smaller cartels like Los Viagras will swoop in and take what's left. But as they do that, they start a fresh war with other smaller factions of the cartel. The violence truly seems without an end. The government's war on drugs is hardly successful and cartels are only upping their violent games to ensure they remain in control. This is all made even more worrying when you consider authorities are interlinked with cartels. As corrupt officials continue to protect cartels, how can there ever be an end to the wars? Hey, thanks a bunch for watching. Leave a comment saying what other cartel topics we should cover. And before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell button. See you all next time.